Hey everyone, it's Blake, and today I'm going to be talking about uh, kind of the basics of policy AFs. Um, so in LD, sometimes policy uh, making arguments are referred to as LARP arguments, like live action role playing, because you are role playing as a policymaker. Um, so if you hear somebody say LARP AF or policy AF or plan AF, they're all kind of the same thing, and that's what we're going to be going over today. So from a like philosophical standpoint, there are five parts uh, that have to be included in every policy AF. Um, now this isn't necessarily like the sections in the actual AF, but these are like five questions basically that the AF has to answer, five things that the AF has to provide. Um, and these are called the stock issues. So there's significance, harm, inherency, topicality, and solvency. Significance is why does the AF matter? Think of it as kind of a setup for weighing. Harms is what bad happens if the AF is not implemented. Think of this kind of similar to impacts. Um, inherency is why hasn't the AF already happened? So think of this as very similar to uniqueness. Um, so inherency is uh, oftentimes like why the problems that you're describing still exist in the world. Like, why hasn't this plan already happened? Four is topicality. How is the plan text an example of the resolution? Because uh, remember in LD, the ultimate decision that is made at the end of the round is an affirmation or a negation of the resolution. So if you're getting up and you're reading a very specific plan, you need to have the topicality of that plan proven. In other words, you have to indicate that if the plan is true and a desirable action, that that proves the resolution to be desirable as well. A lot of times this is implied. You don't often have people get up and explain the AF is topical because blah, blah, blah in the AC. Um, but if T is read in the NC, obviously the 1AR is going to be explaining the topicality and it's important that you know the AC justifies or sets up enough uh, of an argument for topicality that the 1AR can respond to T effectively. But usually uh, topicality in the AF proper is kind of implied. And lastly is solvency. How does the AF change things for the better? What is the thing that the AF does that prevents the harms from occurring? And so these five stock issues are like the must-haves, the must-answer questions for um, all policy AFs. And a lot of people remember them by the acronym of what those first letters make up. Um, yeah, I'll let you read it because sometimes these videos get played in classrooms. Um, but yeah, so shifting gears away from stock issues, which are kind of the questions that are implicitly answered. Um, we're going to talk about the parts of a policy AF. So this is what the... AF actually is composed of like the sections of the AF that is read in the 1AC as opposed to the questions that the AF is going to answer. Um, and now the order of these varies a lot. There's no like blueprint for a policy AF. Um, so I'm just going to talk about each part and um, it's up to you ultimately how you want to order things. Um, so the, the first part that I'll talk about is framework. So just like any AF in LD, you're going to want to establish a framework through which we can view everything else, all the offense happening in the round. So um, it includes a value criterion, or better said, it can include a value criterion, just like traditional framing. Um, most often for policy apps, that's going to be a util criterion. Um, and then plus or minus a role of the ballot about policy making, basically saying that, you know, the uh, role of the ballot is the vote for the debater who provides the best policy option to address um, X kind of impact, right? Um, so the role of the ballot emphasizes, because uh, remember back to our framework video, that role of the ballot is a meta argument about debate. It is aware of the fact that debate is like an activity. Um, it's not just like within the world of like we assume that debate is the real world. This is about debate. So the role of the ballot is saying that the um, act of pretending to be policymakers of LARPing, right, is educational and good for debate. So that's kind of where the role of the ballot comes from. Um, and think of framework as establishing significance. It kind of 
like sets up how important the app is because it sets up what is the most important thing morally. The next part is the plan text. The plan text should be actionable and clear. It may include a card describing what the world of the plan looks like. So if your plan includes something jargony like implementing section 5A subpoint C of the UN treaty on blah, 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 then you might want to have a card explaining what that is. The plan text uh, is often followed if topicality is explicit. It is normally right after the plan text. But most of the time, uh, if you have to like defend in the AC proper why the AF is topical, then it's probably not the most strategic AF to read in the first place. So if you feel like you need to put topicality after your plan text, maybe rethink the plan to a method that is more clearly in line with the resolution. Um, so plan text would be something like um, the resolution itself with a couple of words changed. So if the resolution is something like um, states ought to prohibit the production of nuclear power, the plan text might be something like um, the United States ought to pro prohibit the production of nuclear power. So it is very similar to the resolution, but it specifies something that makes it more material, more actionable, and more clear. Um, because remember, if we're role-playing as policymakers, we want to defend stuff that can actually be implemented and be able to discuss the post-fiat implications of them, as opposed to just um, saying that something is a good idea in the abstract, which most resolutions are written so that you can defend them in the abstract. So the plan text has to modify the resolution to make it more actionable and clear and precise. Advantages. Um, so advantages are the specific areas problems that the plan will help. Think of these like contentions. Uh, so they basically describe what uh, the inherency and harm of the AF are. So um, basically it, it's the same as having like an econ advantage on a traditional AF or a human rights advantage on a traditional AF, but you'd say that the advantage is something like um, regional stability or the advantage is um, econ, uh, econ growth or something like that. And so it's basically providing an area of focus and then explaining why the uh, plan is needed to address that area of focus. So like what bad thing is happening right now and how will the AF address that? Uh, next is solvency. So solvency is how the plan solves, right? Just like the name would imply. Um, but you want to make sure that you're solving for the harms that are described in the advantages. Um, plan apps, and this is a really important point, NLD, and, gen and really all debate in general. If you're reading a plan text, you need to have a solvency advocate, which is a card written by an expert that defends the implementation of the plan, it's the specifics of the plan as described by the plan text. And that's because you as a high school debater don't hold much weight if you just come up with the solution to uh, global warming all by yourself. But if you can provide a solvency advocate that says, hey, this solution that the app is proposing would actually solve for the, clim uh, the climate, then that is much more persuasive than if you just read the plan text and say, hey, I did the math, it checks out, it solves. You provide a solvency advocate that is um, specific to the context and the specifics of the uh, affirmative plan text. Now solvency itself uh, is usually attached to the plan text or advantages. So the solvency advocate, the card that talks about the specifics of the plan text, normally goes immediately under the plan text. But then there can also be advantage specific solvency baked into each of the advantages to describe how um, doing the plan solves for the specific harms described in that advantage. So think of the solvency advocate as basically somebody saying, hey, this plan is legit and is a good idea. And then the solvency cards in the advantage as being like, here's how this action will actually prevent the harms that I just described from getting worse. And the last section or part of a policy app I'll talk about is an optional one um, that is kind of unique to... Um, 
certain types of debate. So if you anticipate like your opponent reading a K or your opponent reading tier theory or something like that, then you would want to include an underview or method section that basically defends why LARPing or role playing as policymakers is a good thing. Um, so often you'll see preempts to Ks or setups for perms that make arguments about why using the state is a good thing or how policymaking makes the K more effective. And that's uh, ultimately to justify the fact that the app is still a good idea, even if the K proves that like pre-fiat the state is bad or um, the mindset shift of the alt is desirable, then the the method section on the app sets up the argument that um, using the state is good even if the state is inherently bad or has done bad things or sets up the argument that we have to do policy making in order to make the mindset shift of the alt more effective stuff along those lines. You may also see T-theory preempts like arguments for why you get RVIs, arguments for why you get 1AR theory, stuff like that. Um, but like I said, this section is optional. You can absolutely read a, a, an effective and strategic policy app that doesn't have a method section or underview. But if you are anticipating the debate going a certain type of way, it is a good idea to preempt that type of debate using a method section or an underview. So some strategic considerations in general for policy apps. Um, like I said, the sections that I just went over, they can happen in any order. Um, so the order is most often uh let me jump back here so framework is often at the top or at the very bottom you don't really throw framework somewhere in the middle but i recommend generally putting framework at the top because that frames how we view everything else right so it's important that we get that established and then generally you'll see a plan section that has the plan text and the solvency advocate You'll see advantages that are labeled advantages, and if there is an underview or method section, it'll be labeled underview or method. Um, there are some things that are um, kind of intuitive but worth mentioning, like your solvency should come um, after the harms that you describe, because if you're like, hey, the app prevents warming, by the way, global warming is bad, that's just a little bit more confusing than saying global warming is bad, the app solves it. Um, the uh, advantages um if there's multiple advantages some people will put the plan text in the middle i don't really understand what the strategic benefit of doing that is i generally think that it's better to group the advantages and put them next to each other um solvency like i said can be its own section but is usually baked into the advantages themselves so there's a lot of different ways that a policy app can look but those are just kind of my notes on the ordering question um, underview and method will be at the bottom most of the time. Um, strategic considerations in general. So if you're reading a policy app, be prepared for T or theory. Um, so uh, the T argument is that you are not defending the resolution or that the plan does not prove the resolution true. Um, theory is saying, um, you know, that you over-specified the resolution and that's unfair or you um, defend like garner offense off of something external to the topic or something like that. So um, be prepared for those kind of debates. Uh, a kind of good argument to keep in your back pocket for those is that real world education outweighs other education and fairness. So policymaking and role playing as policymakers gives us the best real world education. And that matters more than education about things like um, the content area itself or philosophy or anything like that because real world education about like the mechanics of policy making and stuff like that enable us to be advocates for any subject as opposed to if we just learn everything about a subject but we don't know how to format or structure our advocacy then um, that's less effective education you also need to be prepared for k's that link by saying that the app uses the state and the state is bad so you can either go um hard right, which is um, to say that the state is essential to solve the material issues. So if you hear somebody say like the LARP AF is hard right, that means that it like defends the use of the state as a good thing. Whereas there are some policy AFs that are kind of called soft left AFs that are able to recognize that the state might not be a good thing, but is saying that using it is not the same as endorsing it. Um, so it's like, 
the hard right policy app says the state is good and using the state is good. The soft left policy app says the state might be bad, but it's a necessary evil to solve this problem. Um, so those are kind of the that's kind of the fork in the road when you get to responding to state bad case, but be prepared for case where the link is you use the government and the government is bad. Consider the possibility of the neg reading counter plans that are specific to your app or individual advantages. So if you get up and you read an app that specifies, you know, a certain nation or something like that, be prepared for counter plans that um, are specific to that nation or disads that have links specific to the nation uh, and stuff like that. So consider um, the potential counter plans to your app just so that you're prepared to respond to them when they come up. And the last note I have on here is about fiat. Um, so I discussed fiat in the intro to K's video, um, and but I'll kind of give a, a crash course here. But if it's not making sense, I would recommend watching the beginning of the intro to K's video. But in essence, fiat is um, the, it, it translates roughly to let it be done. And it is the moment that the AF is implemented is the distinction between the pre-fiat period and the post-fiat period. So the pre-fiat period is like the debate itself, everything that happens prior to the AF being implemented. And then when the judge signs the ballot at the end of the round, live action role-playing or LARPing AFs assume that that means that the AF has been implemented once the ballot has been signed. So now everything good that comes from the implementation of the AF is now the post-fiat world. And uh, the concept of fiat in debate is used to say that the AF gets access to fiat. That is to say the AF does not have to prove that the plan gets passed or that the plan is likely to get passed. It just has to prove that the AF is desirable. And then we fiat or say that the signing of the ballot implicitly passes it. So you don't have to win that it gets through Congress. You just assume that it does. However, this does not get you out of politics disads, which say that, you know, doing the AF will make X political party angry or cause X president to get elected or um, this representative get impeached or anything like that. So it, it does not mean fiat does not mean that the action is neutral and not perceived politically, but it means that you don't have to win that the politics of the nation that you're implementing the plan in are such that the plan would pass. So you don't have to win that the plan gets passed, but you do have to defend what happens after, including political ramifications. Um, so that's just a note on how fiat functions when it comes to policy uh, AF debates. Um, I know that there is a lot of jargon and, and uh, a little bit um, of a lack of like, hard structure and organization to this uh, discussion, but that's just kind of the nature of policy apps. There's no one size fits all. Um, so as always, if you have a question, please let me know, leave it in the comments uh, or reach out if you um, can. And um, otherwise, um, hopefully this was helpful and have a good rest of your day.